Hello, Jason Bates here, owner of Electrum Financial, a mortgage broker located right here in beautiful Cave Creek, Arizona, where a mortgage is not a flip of the coin. So if you're looking to purchase or need to refinance, I would like to be your broker of choice as I have access to lowest rates at the lowest cost in Arizona. And if you don't believe me, call me. Here is this week's mortgage market at a glance. This week's new home sales report for the month of March stole the show coming in over 1 million for the first time since 2006. But although sales are up 66% year over year, prices have fallen in recent months and are now basically unchanged from last year. So what's up with that? Making all this more puzzling, at first glance anyways, is the fact that home price appreciation has been breaking records according to some reports. Here's the widely followed FH, FHFA House Price Index. FHFA's data is for repeat sales and refinances. That means it doesn't capture new home prices at the time of construction despite thoroughly tracking home prices in general. There's a separate home sales report for existing sales, and it does a better job tracking with FHFA's home price trends. Fortunately, that report also came out this week. In some ways, it caused the plot to thicken. Unlike new home sales, existing home sales fell in March and are now noticeably below levels seen since the end of 2020. If you've been shopping for a home recently, then you know record low inventory is the primary reason. Now, as you might expect, when home sales are falling due to inventory constraints, we shouldn't be seeing any downward pressure in prices. Indeed, existing home prices easily smashed their previous record, set just last month. Now, one can't help but notice the rhythmic regularity in the existing home price chart. This is another huge clue in solving our new home price mystery. It suggests that new home prices must be diverging from the broader trend for their own reasons, something that is specific to new home, the new home market. Reason being, existing homes comprise a far larger portion of the housing market. And because existing homes already, well, exist, their price trend is significantly less affected by changes in buyer preferences or builder offerings. There's indeed something about new homes causing prices to fall. In a word, size. The medium home is almost 200 square feet smaller than it was in 2017. And as far as anyone who has shopped for a home loan recently, lot sizes have shrunk even faster. The net effect is the average new home is smaller and more affordable. The previous chart would show an even bigger contrast were it not for material prices. Lumber is in the insanity zone, up more than 300% since the start of the pandemic. Experts disagree on when the madness will end and what sort of recovery we may see. Persistently low interest rates continue to help offset high material prices. They also benefit existing and new home prices equally. 2021 has been an unprecedented year for interest rates up until this month. April. It wasn't until last week that rates really distanced themselves from recent highs seen at the end of March. This week was another good one for rates with the average lender back down to the lowest levels in almost two months. 10-year treasury yields, the most widely followed benchmark for long-term rates like mortgages, have been well behaved in their move lower. The next milestone would be a break below 1.53%, a level that served as the floor for both this week and last week. The continuation of this friendly trend depends on several factors. While everyone loves a good prediction, they are a tricky business, especially when they pertain to the future. Even if someone is right about rates going lower, they may not be right about the timing or the magnitude of the move. What I do know is that over the longer run, rate levels will be determined by the health of the economy, the state of the pandemic, inflation, and the level of new debt issuance used to pay for things like COVID relief and infrastructure. Since I don't know really how everything will shake out, 
I have to assume there are several potential outcomes ranging from moderately lower to significantly higher. Granted, if rates move significantly higher, it wouldn't be overnight. But it's important to understand lessons from history. They provide two clear recent examples of how long a rising rate environment can last and how much ground it can actually cover. So there you have this week's Mortgage Market at a Glance. If you'd like to know more, reach out to me. I'd like to meet you and that's for sure. Thanks for watching and if you're looking to purchase or refinance a home in Arizona, I would like to be your broker of choice. Until next time, take care and stay safe.